Good evening, folks. We're going to dive a bit deeper on this morning's story about China's hazardous weather plan, but here it will be on a potential unmentioned reason for China's massive weather modification, releasing silver iodide from ground-based burning stations high on Tibetan mountains. So first, let's get a bit of a visual on where these hundreds of thousands of burning stations are going to be placed. This is, of course, Asia, and the region where they're going is Tibet aimed at condensing moisture on the particles released high up into the atmosphere. The idea being to increase rainfall across a wide region that has the potential to be an unimaginably enormous reservoir. The Tarim Basin is the large area around that desert-like oval in western China. The region is much larger than that oval-shaped desert. It is the plateau that slowly feeds the regions below in China, notably the green region to the east. Their water needs are soaring, and their dam and management efforts aren't enough. They just need more water. Now this is what the intertropical conversion zone looks like in the northern winter. The Indian Ocean moisture stays over the seas while the conversion zone slips southward off the continent and into the sea. However, as northern summer comes, the flow of moisture tends to drive up over India and towards the Tibetan Plateau, both directly and with the northern push on its eastern side. This is how both India and China support massive populations, this water right here. We were a bit light on this area in terms of coverage in our book, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, so perhaps now we should go a bit past that with some newer articles as well. Let's begin with the sun's influence on the monsoon itself. It is now well recognized that higher sunspot activity is correlated with a more northern and more variable monsoonal flow. Meanwhile, lower solar activity is correlated with what is known as Indian monsoon failure, where the convergence zone stays further south and the primary flow is towards Indochina and finally over Vietnam. This not only has driven million death famines in India during Grand Solar Minimum, but it is poised to make what used to be major drought events in China before they had a billion people and turn it into an absolute catastrophe if it were to happen again now. FYI, the primary forcing of this are via Siberian high intensification under high sunspot number and under Arctic phase oscillation, shifting that allows the higher solar activity to control an active northern flow of the vapor while the weaker solar activity can't keep it from flowing eastward instead of north. It is also notable that the Hadley cell effects that were responsible for over 80% of the mechanistic explanations of solar forcing in our book are related to the ocean subcontinent dynamics at work in this region's hydrology, the monsoon, making for a top-down and direct forcing effect of the sun on this flow. So, let's try once again to visualize the effects versus, say, an average flow in summer. When the sun is active, we get a wavy and strong flow northward over a wide area from the Tarim Basin to eastern China, while lower activity can drive the failure of the flow and the southern track to the east. Most of the solar monsoon forcing data comes from China and India, and about 20 to 40 percent of modern relevant solar physics papers. If they know the sun is going to sleep, they might want to try to stave off the worst effects that would jeopardize about a billion of their people. As we mentioned this morning, the silver iodide they want to put up into the sky Having it in your water isn't good, whether you're a plant or a person. And as we always mention in these topics, we should not be playing God in the skies. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.